I'm Lauren Rhodes. And I'm Cam Cody. And our concept is called MediaByte. We are the first company to provide the conduit for pay per article media consumption for end users of digital written media. This past year, the journalism industry took in $26 billion less than it did the decade before. And this largely has to do with the switch from print to digital journalism. With the emergence of Web 2.0, publishers began to feel pressure to put their content online where their users were. And so, in order to do this, they realized that they would need to find a way to make money. And so they relied exclusively on advertising revenue and offered their content for free. But then they realized this is not a sustainable business model and we need to start getting readers to pay. So to do that, we began implementing paywalls. So there are two main types of paywalls that exist. There are hard paywalls in which all of their content is locked behind the paywall. You can't see anything unless you have a subscription. And then there are metered paywalls, which is a more um, common form of paywall. Um, it allows readers to read between about three and five articles before they're asked to pay up. To give you um, an idea of what a paywall looks like, kind of locally speaking, um, the Boston Globe charges about $207 per year to read their newspaper online, and the Wall Street Journal falls just shy of $400. So the Pew Research Center did a survey on paywalls that kind of exemplifies the problem really well. What it showed was that 87% of respondents would immediately leave their favorite news site if they were to put up a paywall. So what does this tell us? This tells us that publishers are losing a lot of readership. The subscription model is ill-suited for digital journalism. It worked well for print journalism. You're getting a tangible newspaper in the mail and you can read the entire thing, but nowadays people may not want to read the entire thing and yet they're being asked to pay for the entire thing. So publishers need a new way, a more personal one personalized way to monetize their content, and that is where MediaByte comes in. So MediaByte works by not locking people into subscriptions, but instead allowing you to pay for individual articles across a variety of different sources. There's two components to this idea, the MediaByte website and the Byte button. With the website, you can set up and access your personalized user account. It has a wallet, which you can use to replenish your funds to buy articles on publisher sites for around 30 cents. There's also the media binder, which is an archiving function so that you can look at articles that you've already bought. In conjunction with that, there's also tools to allow you to learn more about the subject and connect you to articles that are very similar. With that as well are customized media recommendations. And this allows users to update their interests inside their profile, and we basically provide them with a front page in media bite that's specific to them with articles of interest. There's also the bite button, and this is how people securely click to pay articles on publisher sites. As you can see, it's listed on a banner just like you would have a Facebook button or a tweet button. Basically, when you have a hit a paywall, what you see is a brief extract or what they call a lead, and the rest of it is blurred out and it tells you to pay more. By clicking this button, the article becomes fully accessible, and then in turn, it also goes into your archiving function. So there are, as of 2015, there are 173 million unique visitors to digital newspapers. And this is a 19% increase since 2014. On top of that, the mobile market has absolutely skyrocketed. 155% growth among uh, young women, 18 to 24, and men, 34 to 45, 122% growth. But most of this is not being captured by the subscription model. In turn, we find that these people are between these four types of readers. The first is a niche reader. It's a person who's not interested in reading the entire Sunday edition, but they are interested in just reading about sports or business. There's also infrequent readers, and these are people who might read one or two articles a day, but they aren't interested and they can't justify buying a full yearly subscription that can cost upwards of $400 for the Wall Street Journal. There's also students who have low discretionary income, but also have a large digital presence, as we're seeing now. They, they need news, but they want it from a variety of different sources. Professors and academics also need this type of source for research purposes and for keeping informed. Um, when we analyze the top 20 paid digital volumes, as far as subscribers go on newspapers, we found that 15% of people who had accounts previously left immediately when paywalls were implemented. This, this contributes to about 450,000 users, which we believe we can capture by the end of year two at full operation. Sort of a timeline of uh, what we're having for business operations. We believe we'll need nine months for web development and design, which is very similar to startups that are our type of format, followed by three to six months of beta testing 
to make a fully functional model. We hope to have 25,000 users by the end of that data period. We'll need about $1.09 million in capital, which is mainly contributable to the web development and the labor costs. We believe we'll be able to capture this by engaging with publishers and with venture capitalists and offering them an equity stake in our company. We plan to break even at the end of year two's full operation, and we believe this will be 14.5 million units. And although this seems like a staggering number, that's contributed to the 450,000 users reading 30 articles a year, which is contributed to $10 a person. Um, in addition to this, we also have consumer analytics as a revenue stream that we'll talk about later. Beginning in year three, we want to design and develop the support of podcast and broadcast media. And during this period, it'll allow us to add some additional revenue streams, as well as more consumer content. So getting down to specifics with our revenue streams, we're looking at a 70-30 split between content providers and Mediabyte. And an additional source of revenue, which we just touched upon, was, is consumer analytics. Um, because it is such a personalized way of paying for journalism, we know what readers are reading. And with this information, the program can recognize trends. And this information can be sold back to publishers to help them better get to know their readers. Um, by the end of or by year three, we're really hoping to expand our media options into the realm of academic journals. For example, um, JSTOR turns away 150 million article attempts to read articles every year. Um, and this largely has to do with the fact that a personal account for JSTOR per year costs $400. And that's just not very attainable to the average person. Um, beyond that, we would like to expand into podcasts and independent film. Um, actually, just at the Nelson Poster competition this past Wednesday, someone came up to me and said, hey, I really want to monetize my podcast. How can I adopt the bike button to do that? And um, so it just goes to show that um, independent media producers really need a way to monetize their content. And media Byte provides a very viable and relatively simple way to do that. And when we're talking about broadcast media, we're talking about a lot of sports streams. If you go on a, uh, on a European site and you want to watch a Premier League game, for instance, you have to pay a full subscription that can be $30 a month or so. If you could buy just the games that were related to the teams that you wanted to watch, it would be much more convenient for a consumer, and it would bring additional advertising revenue to these broadcasts. So in terms of engaging publishers and getting, um, getting them excited about our idea, uh, we plan on working with co-funding web developer, developers to create the initial beta model, and additionally, employing a small sales team for individual meetings with publishers. So what both of these teams will do is um, design a beta model that can show publishers, like, and help them visualize what Mediabyte will look like when it's integrated with their website, and additionally, provide an educational resource for publishers on concepts such as payment security. And because this is such a relatively new concept, we need that education. Um, and we have been in contact with um, four news outlets in the region. Um, within those are the Concord Monitor and the Keene Sentinel. Uh, David San Giorgio, head publisher at the Monitor, and Terry Williams, president and COO of the Sentinel, have both expressed um, great interest in the idea, and they hope to see it um, move forward into the world of digital journalism, so eventually it could be adopted onto their websites. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you so much. I, um, I, I think it's a great idea. It, keeps, it make, makes me think of something kind of like when you go to iTunes and you can just push a button and you can purchase something that you want to listen to, right? But this is, you can purchase the digital content. Have you given any thoughts to the fact that when the um, individual does make that purchase, um, how they archive the articles that they have, or will they have that ability so that they can go back to anything that they have purchased? That's what I was talking about with the, okay. uh, the media binder earlier. Okay. Um, and basically, yeah, this allows you to archive your links that you have. And also, we want to make customized tools so that people can learn more information about it. There's this great app called Yahoo Digest, and it's not just when you read the article, but it also gives you Wikipedia about the subject itself. It gives you links to different articles and things like that. And we'd like to do something similar in our archiving function. So we provide people with more than just a regular article. You can't take your archive and send it to somebody else. That's though, what I was just thinking about you? the sharing yeah. part. The sharing no, part, no, the yeah, sharing that's part. That's a, so protection, you buy a copy, right. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, and by the way, we're not necessarily archiving the actual article on our website, we're archiving the link 
itself. And that permission to go read it for mm -hmm. that one time buy. Yeah, which makes it. Now I have a, on Google, I can tell them when they find a certain subject. And on eBay, I have a certain, you know, when something I'm interested in, it, tell me, tell me, because yeah. I can't go looking. Mm -hmm. But I know that their ability to search is not going to be as refined and specialized as yours, basically. Yes. So you'll have a, if I tell you guys, your company, boy, I'm really interested in this. Like, I bought an article from the University of Moscow once through a scientific, and it cost me like 100 bucks. But it took me 30 minutes to find it. That was a great article. Yeah. You know, so and that's what we wanted. Very and so easy. if I could have gone into some little specialty store and said, okay, find me these articles, then to the degree that your tentacles can go out and search more specifically than Google or, you know, yeah. I'm presuming that because they're specialized, they can't be good at everything. And we've been talking with actually some web development students. So how, then recently. you'd have to get, now, now I go through your portal and I find everything I need. Okay, yeah. What if I find something I like and then you have to solicit those people like the local newspapers to get them to put your little bike button on their page so yes. that I can bring it back to me, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how that works. And they're not selling small slices, they're selling big pieces, and mm -hmm. you're selling small slices, right? Yes, exactly. It's yeah. intriguing. They own the cake. And, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, it's, 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 we're picking up the crumbs in a way. Yeah. Oh, well, so there's <laughs> a lot of crumbs. Yeah, there's, well, and there's that's a the lot thing, of, it's a volume-based business. Well, so that's right, there's a yeah. lot in the little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the penny store worth a lot. Exactly. Know? And that's why um, over the first nine months, sales is going to be a huge component of our business and why we want a small team because we understand that we need to reach out to a lot of individual publishers in order to get the volume that we So if I own a newspaper and, and I've got you know, sports political page and I've got this and that, mm -hmm. it's not efficient for me to slice my paper up and sell it in pieces to the people that subscribe for $200 a year? Or to just, it's not a model that works for them? We find, yeah, what we find is that a lot of the a lot of people nothing. who would buy subscriptions are going to continue buying subscriptions because right. they're interested in reading. The, in the this is like an entirely different group where it's people who, right. I just want to read an article, you know? Like, yeah, or it's I like, want, I, mean, I buy the Wall Street Journal, I'll, I'll probably read four articles. I want to know why Shirelli was fired. Like, those yeah. kinds of things we're yeah. interested in. Well, you know what's interesting? Uh, I noticed that I fell just outside of your target audience. I, you know, it's unfortunate, but, <laughs> but I would be a heavy user uh, yeah. and, and have been, and I've run into the same problems about the, you know, these, these paywalls that, that just completely annoy, you know, actually make you run away. I almost want to cancel, you know, your, your written subscription. But, but I can understand, uh, uh, you know, if you can develop this model, the, then the next question is, how do you protect it so that, so that you own this model? We've been, um, we've actually kind of been talking about using patent lawyer right away, and it's part of my initial capital cost are being able to patent this system immediately because there are like kind competition um, in the Netherlands, but what they do is it's a more of an iTunes format, so they right. don't actually link through the individual publishers. Right. So you can't buy there, it all comes to that site. So we're working um, right now on trying to um, basically lawyer up and try to find out how we can get the correct. I, th I think that's a good investment because that's the, that's the only thing you're going to own because everybody else will have more capital yeah. and can run faster. And using so, user information and stuff too, we do need like you know a specialized disclaimer, uh, copywriting, and things like that. So we need to make sure that that's under control as well. Right. So those are important stuff. When I read this, I thought of you guys are the first ones on the block that are selling pizza by the slice, mm -hmm. and, and I, I like the concept. But now help me out with I'm going to go with this link. Do they still control the banner advertising on the link? So when you go through to their site, or do you have control over that? They have control over Okay, everything. is that part of your business model maybe to do it so that you can collect that? Because what I look at here is you can data source your people and watch the articles and the value of what you guys are gonna be able to collect in terms of information on the people that use your site. Yes. Right. Your value of that banner is much better than the guy on the other end. And that's why we thought analytics immediately when we thought that was because and instead of seeing an entire picture, you know, all the subscription, you're seeing just individual articles. You know, this is exactly what content readers are interested, what they're clicking on, and and I think that's very important. But, right. But uh, your thirty cents value just went way up per user because right. you're going to collect the thirty cents. But, but there, you can control there's, the banner. there's a sequence to all of this, which is you've got to protect the front end yes. because you're going to need a lot of capital, and you will need a million dollars, I think, to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. But this data analytics. That's going to pay for you year two and year three. Absolutely. But you have to get users, get the you you know the database in there, and, and then there are a lot of folks out there who are supplying content who want to pay you to find out what else are they reading. So how can I 
right. supply relevant content. So, yeah. 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 You've got a whole other revenue stream on the back end of this thing that will be just as big or bigger. And we're not saying get rid of advertising no, because obviously that's extremely important for people by cable not to have commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you paying per transaction or can you prepay like $20 so you don't have 30 that's cents? That's what we have to do actually because we went through the process of trying to make micropayment transactions and the transaction costs are just insane. It's yeah. too high. Yeah. So what we did is we decided we need to implement a minimum wallet fund and that's why yeah. we have the wallet and then from there you can make purchases. So it's a $5 minimum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your easy pass. That's what I thought. Yeah. Again, that's it's exactly. easy media pass is what this is. Mm -hmm. So, so buy thirty dollars. When you talk to those media sources and you talk to them about this bite button, what did they say? How interested would they be to put the, the bite button? Yeah, that's in? a that's a big part. Yeah, they were. Um, can you go that side? Yeah, that's a big big part because uh, they have to cooperate. We had just a couple of like direct quotes from um, one of the emails back, um, and they were both very enthusiastic. Um, mostly, what they said to me was basically like nothing like this has ever really been um, implemented before, or like experimented with before, especially on these smaller regional newspapers. Um, the Keen Sentinel does have something similar that's exclusive to its own website, where they um, charge. They have a function where you're allowed to charge per article. They have very little traffic to it right now, and I think that primarily has to do with the fact that, um, as far as I know, they don't have the archiving function, and additionally. Um, like theoretically, if every newspaper or a brand name that. necessarily either, or, you know, yeah. that's also important. But if every newspaper were to implement its own sort of like micropayment function, um, the issue is that sort of has people putting their credit card information in a bunch of yeah. places. Mm -hmm. And with us, it's just simple. It's a one time, you just link up your wallet, it's easy. Um, so, me friendly. mechanically, how do they put the bite button onto an article? What it's very to similar to like how they would put a Facebook button. It's it's a basic algorithm that you can okay. uh, or basic. So it's web. easy enough for them to do. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'm just trying the, to make sure that it's not it's not a hassle for them to have to go through. Yeah. If you want it to be secure, it's basically telling our site. It's the time for you to pay them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and open because we don't want obviously that type of money running back. Yeah. So, so you have an audience where people go to that site and then they want to take an article. Just, they don't want to subscribe to the whole paper. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. Yes. Yes. So, is there any angle on on the actual journalist? You know, if you're a journalist for a, a large media publication, you probably don't care so much because you're going to you're going to be seen. But if you're writing for the you know the Keen Sentinel, is is there some value that uh, you know that Terry Williams can? Uh, Used to retain some of, you know, the new talent that they bring in that they have. I think one of the broader best, audience or something. Yeah, and that's what I think is one of the best things is now you're not just getting keen, you know, you're not just right. getting that region. What you're getting is the entire country. Oh, and, and that's the point is that if Terry wants to recruit somebody and he pulls them into Keene, yeah. and they're saying, okay, I can live here for about two years, but I want to get to Boston, and they start getting published more or seen or read more, uh, you know, this is. You know, how do you reach out to those people because you'd want them kind of supporting it on the other side of it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so once you once you have data analytics and yeah. you know what some of your users are looking for, if there was some way, you know, to look at the, you know, the, the journalists who were supplying those topics, mm -hmm. you know, the experts in those areas, how how they could be fed more directly into some of these. I mean, you might be able to make money on that. Yeah, pairing yeah, people up. You know, yeah, what, what if I say I want to see an article about something specific? Mm -hmm. And that just happened to be one of these two newspapers that I never go to their website. Yeah. Before right. that. So it's nice so that I know that that <laughs> so article It's exists. turning this around. So Terry yeah, right. will pay you to yeah. get those articles read. But the journalist will say, no, wait a minute. I'll pay you to get, and you know, hits on my article. That's true. So, I mean, I didn't even think of it from that angle before. But that's so how, how, I know. You know, how do I discover that he's got a writer that I like? That yeah. I, that I haven't gotten to his newspaper. <laughs> You know, so you guys have to have a link, just like me going to Google. You have to somehow know me after a while. Well, uh, that was and my point. Is you've got the, the data on the users of your site. Yeah. Yeah. The next question is, 
is there something about the data that you find about the journalists who are writing the content yeah, that your users step, really right. like? Yep. And then is, is there some way to go after that and monitor? I, it absolutely is possible. You know, it's, Like that. That. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be easiest actually. Yeah, yeah. and it would, I think it would be relatively simple to go through staff and do that. But yeah. because if they them. don't have a bite button, but they've written an article I want to read, and I don't go to their website, mm -hmm. is there any chance I'll be able to yeah, see well, that? Yeah, well, we want to have search tools on our actual right. site so that you can look for certain authors or you can look for certain That's papers. Yeah, yeah, probably that would be that. Awesome, so. so can I bypass this easy. local newspaper and just go straight to AP? Associated Press, and just go right to their writers because they sell it to all these little yeah, guys. That's what yeah. I was going. So you're just yeah. skipping these guys and going right to them. Would the AP be interested in your model and sell um, direct? I think. Yeah, I think they would. I think um, I think they would be interested in that. Um, I think because we just want the information, and your bike button yeah. better be there to right. get us to that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, no, the I reason I ask is the AP yeah. doesn't have any banners. Okay. Right. Right. So it now they be. control it. But yeah, it's a way to skip right. no. skip the end user. It might be an even better model. Yeah, that is, that is completely possible. Okay, you know, that, I mean, really, that is that could be something is, is exactly that. I like what Mike writes, so I want to read everything Mike wrote. All right, and, and 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 it's different right now. If you find an author you, you you like an article on, then you you have to go on the internet and just. You know, yeah. do a lot of steps to get to yeah. what else this person right Where was it published? And everything. The articles else. get longer and longer. <laughs> right. You don't know whether you're over the article. There's more below it. Okay. Yeah. 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 It drives me nuts. Well, I mean, that's sort of a matter of These are news yeah. junkies, and you get a chance yeah. to your demographics. Yeah. You can test mm -hmm. So obviously, the copycat with the deeper pockets is your most obvious problem. Mm -hmm. but Mike Tyson once says, "Everybody's got a great plan until they get punched in the face." Yes. Tell me what your punch in the face is that's not that one. What, what do you see? I can show you kind of what our punch in the face looks okay. like. Yeah, thanks. It's this right here, and yeah. it's called Bundle. And basically, their whole idea is that they are like an iTunes format. So instead of like linking to actual publishers, they bring all the content to themselves. And right now, they only operate in the Netherlands. They have um, 20 news sources that they pull from. The only thing is that there's no ad revenue at all. So you're not actually driving any content towards their actual sites, which is kind of like what we're trying to do that's a little bit differently. Um, is because they lose all that avenue and all this traffic that's going on to these publishers' sites because everything's going to Blendle instead. So they're making all the money off it. Uh, yeah, they're getting the distribution. Though, in the mm -hmm. They're doing very well in the Netherlands, um, which just sort of helps our point that um, pay per article works. Like it has been proven to work, but. Um, the issue is that we don't know if it's going to translate very well in the United States. We just have. There's also a very interesting function that I don't think would work in the States as well as the <coughs> Netherlands it works. Uh, and that would be because they allow users to, after they've read an article, refund their money, which is very interesting. So after someone's actually done that, if you, I mean, let's be honest, people in the US would be less likely to not use that than people in the Netherlands. They've been actually making, I think, what was the percentage? It was something. 10% ref refund, but I can imagine that would be much higher in the U.S. if they tried to implement that same format where they're allowing people to refund their articles after they've already read it. Just also, we have they're losing revenue. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's, uh, it is. A lot of different, um, I think they're releasing the different yeah. article repetition. Um, if everything were to be aggregated under one source, all these new sources, um, I think it's just like, let's say something happens in Washington, a bunch of different sources are reporting on basically the same thing. So you get the same article with slightly different wording a bunch of times, and if it's all under one roof, how are people to determine which one right. to buy? There you go. So. That's a good point. Yeah. Two minutes, Okay. okay. Do you think you can make it work through uh, translations? So if you want to go to foreign articles, you can translate them? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Actually, Google has functions that you can do that. Yeah. Right, but now, you, but now you've got a third party involved, so you guys can build your model to go through so I can find something that's maybe a perspective of somebody overseas, because that's I want their perspective on the same article. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's entirely possible. You know, we haven't talked about full globalization yet and working with publishers outside the U.S. yet, but we figured after, you know, the growth that we could have with North America, then we can move forward with that. Start. Yeah. <laughs> good place to start. Good place to start. Yeah. That's where we are. It's a couple people there. Yeah. Right. Nice job. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much.